Johnson's on his left. The Rebels clinched the West Regional title with a convincing win over the sentimental favorite Loyola Marymount. With the victory, UNLV was on its way to the Final Four. Denver, Colorado greeted the Rebels with freezing temperatures and snow, plus a horde of reporters, all wanting to know more about the so-called bad boys of basketball. We're not talking bad at all. We're just talking T-shirts. <laughs> That's all we're talking. We're talking $15 T-shirts, and it looked good, so we went ball one. <laughs> I think what we had to do is keep the same mindset that we've had the entire year, and our, our defense has been one of our main strengths. Right. And that's something we're going to have to still try to tune up and, and focus in on. Well, you know, when we got off this plane, it was all bit, it's all business now. You know, there's no more, um, you know, fun. You know, we came out here to do a job. Ball, ball, ball. Of the four teams left in the NC2A tournament, UNLV quickly emerged as the fans' favorite. Thousands packed into McNichols Arena in Denver to watch the team practice. And still others watched the Rebel cheerleaders and Shark mascot strut their stuff at a pep rally. Then it was time to get serious. UNLV faced Georgia Tech in the NC2A semifinal. The Runner Rebels were sluggish in the first half and at intermission found themselves trailing the Yellow Jackets by seven. Everything going Georgia Tech's way. 13 for Kenny. But it was a different story when the teams hit the court for the second half. A pep talk from Tark did the trick. The team played with a new intensity and a tenacious defense that turned Georgia Tech's lethal weapon three into little more than a pop gun. Now to Hunt and Butler to finish. He's got it. That'll do it. Yes, sir. A big sigh of relief. I was in agony through most of the game, believe me. I, and then when we get to the end like that, you know, I, I told Greg after the game, I said, you're going to drive me to my grave. Beginning of the second half, they came out and they were just they they just wanted it more than we did. They came out, they um let their defense, you know, change the tempo. They forced us into some turnovers, they got some fast breaks, and kind of threw us, you know, in the funk. We did not play very well offensively that first eight minutes, and I thought that was the difference of the game. And UNLV showed a lot of composure. It's it's nice to be in the final two and you know, it'll be a good game for us because we match up so well inside and, you know, we're just going to accept the challenge. It feels great. It's hard to explain. Oh, I feel great. <laughs> I love my team. We're playing in the championship game and, and I'm very proud of the guys. Then, just one more team stood between UNLV and the national championship. The Duke Blue Devils, the All-American team, good students, good athletes, but not good enough. The Rebels opened the game hot and got even hotter as the clock ticked. The Rebels showed their defensive prowess and left the stunned Duke team wondering what happened. I'm in awe of what they did tonight. I don't know if you really realize how, how good they were defensively. It's, it's your dream to win the national championship and to have that not happen and not play well and, and them just totally dominate. Um, you know, I, it's t I mean, I feel terrible. It was just one of those games that you dream about and, and you know, I'm just as pleased as I can be. They have won their first ever national championship and in three trips, the Shark comes away a winner in a record-setting night, 103-73, UNLV. This win is this win is for the kids, but it's mostly is for the great people in the state of Nevada. The whole state supports us, and I'm just so happy for them.